course, I'm gonna take the side of a personal friend of mine. My such good friend Nick is not great. Nick, truly show me true friendship. I do not associate myself with anyone involved. What? Ethan and Lex, are they not your actual friends? Someone that I'm personally friends with, Lex. And she's also the partner of one of my very good friends. Ethan is online. There's like pictures of these people together. That dude perfect, I remember. And he's in a band with you it just it feels like they're just not actually friends this is not how friends operate bro this is crazy these people are in a whole nother world for me man and i'm so thankful for that people act as mirrors and people who actually care about you real friends they'll make you face the mirror these people are not that bad faith <laughs> this is a business transaction between two sad people who know they can benefit off of each other Hi. Nick is not green has a, released an additional response to the super mega situation. The response in question is at the start of a video called YouTuber exposes Mr. Beast for faking a video. Here we go. This video is sponsored by Love. Oh my God, I don't care. I've been thinking a lot about my role in the controversy that I made a video about on Friday. Even though I know that there are disputes about Lex's story that she is planning on fully addressing this week. Okay, so those disputes, I would say most, I guess, concisely articulated in Turkey Tom's uh, new video on this whole situation, which does very, you know, much go into Lex's story in depth. If you're very invested in this for whatever reason, you know, that's the place you can find the context for that. Interesting, I guess, to learn that Lex, you know, is planning to, uh, I guess, respond to pretty much to that video. I want to address this issue completely separate from her and talk about how I inappropriately handled reporting on a story that I should not have reported on. Yes, that's facts. You could have reported on it. Let's just be clear. But the way you did it absolutely was wrong. I'm fucking thankful. This is what he is basically making clear. The official response that he made a whole video about was lackluster to say the least. I'm realizing pretty late that I was too close to the story and regardless on my personal feelings for the situation, it was irresponsible for me to involve myself and my platform into a conflict that really had nothing to do with me. And also just because it's not just that. Yes, he had a history of doing this, you know, kind of like getting involved on his friends behalf, whatever. But it's not just that. It is much more in the vein of how he did it. You know what I mean? It's not just that he was too close to it. Um, he was too close to it and he bungled it. I didn't intentionally lie or make things up just because I can continue saying that I went into this situation in good faith. I am not free from... Claiming he went into this situation in good faith is laughable to me. Very laughable. Anybody who has watched his original videos knows and can tell that his goal was to cancel Super Mega. It's not stated explicitly, but every single indicator that you could possibly interpret as that being his goal was effectively displayed, including taking every accusation, not just in the worst faith, but a lot of them at face value as being complete fact, things that were disproven. Again, the stuff that Layton involved and included. Doubling down that everything was in good faith, I think is just to protect his image. I think it is either he's lying to himself, which is possible. I very much believe he could be lying to himself or he's lying to you, to everyone. Either way, it's a lie. From the criticism of how I actually am making and reporting on those videos. Yes, I went into the story with my best intention to spread the word on a victim story. Controversial to some of you, maybe, but I believe him. I believe him that he thinks he truly was just doing the right thing. I think that Nick believes and totally has convinced himself that that action specifically and past actions are purely in the vein of protecting or supporting victims. And there's no egoic element to it. It's a selfless thing. I don't think that he at all was trying to like profit off of it, but I will argue that effectively there was a lot more at play than just wanting to raise Lex's stories. Nick even himself is about to admit one of the criticisms that I've been kind of championing or whatever. I still can say now that there was no foul play behind the scenes involved. I just did what I thought was best. Right. Nick um, is referring to the more or less conspiracy that this was a contrived, organized effort to cancel Super Mega. That detail to me is not super important because it's just pretty obvious. Like even if Nick wasn't like explicitly in on plans, even if nobody was like, we're going to cancel. It was very clearly like a coordinated kind of situation that Nick to an extent was most likely seemingly excited about based on some of his posts. I don't mean excited in the sense that he was necessarily glad or excited that Lex was coming out with this story. 
story, more in the sense of like, he felt like he was a part of something. Either way, regardless of what you believe about that, my addition to the story was destructive and it hurt everyone involved. Our boy has, he's gone and he's actually faced the mirror. It took a lot of cope. It took a lot of deluding himself, bro. Holy shit. A lot of Instagram posts that were very defensive, even a fucking addressing video that was fairly fucking defensive. But we're finally here. The man has faced the fucking mirror and seen a little bit of maybe the reality. I don't know. You tell me. Although I think so many people who are on the opposing side have not helped the argument and have made themselves That's aggressively facts. wrong in a lot of situations. That's facts. I've been kind of saying this where it's like a lot of people covering the situation. Not everyone. Not everyone by a mile. But there are people, especially initially, who were covering the situation that were like sensationalizing it as like a counter reaction. I knew that that would legitimize Nick writing off all of his critics as deplorables or degenerates. He's, I guess, not totally wrong about that. I thought about this and how I honestly and truly feel about it without the anger or defensiveness from so many people attacking me on all sides. And through thinking about this situation, I realized that there is so much that I could have done better. I should not be involved or be a part of the story, and I should not- Again, he could have been involved in the story or whatever. It's just you gotta have a lot more fucking care, clearly more care than you're capable of. Because again, in the last video, he doubled down and said basically, you know, I did the best job that I could, which is, if true, terrifying, but it's not true. I doubt it. Because once again, Nick recorded, he states it in his first video that he made about this super mega situation. He records the first video around 10 p.m. at night. I'm currently shooting this video on Friday night at about 10.30 p.m. He uploaded that video, I believe, just before 1 p.m. his time the next day, which has pretty crazy implications. The turnaround for that video covering a two and a half hour long video and two three hour long streams was about 13 hours, probably less if we're assuming he slept. So potentially like mashing together this video that is covering very serious allegations with the goal of canceling Super Mega, not the platforming them, but yeah, canceling them feeding the mob it is what it, it was face the mirror on that one nick uh, if you don't do it publicly sure whatever but privately please accept that it was a rush job completely a rush job without a doubt it isn't that you got involved it's that your involvement seemed very aggressively potentially opportunistic again not because you wanted money not because of that you did want to help i believe that you wanted to help but i believe that there were also all a bunch of other motivators going on behind the scenes by the time by the way that nick recorded his video so we're talking like the friday that he recorded his video at 10 p.m lexus video had already garnered over 200,000 views i believe it's literally in nick's video as a screenshot you can see lexus video has 200,000 views and then nick would go on to claim that his goal for for making the video is to spread Lex's story. When Matt from Super Mega had already made it explicitly clear he was about to respond, he stated, I'm going to respond. And so why did Nick feel the need to spread Lex's story when it had already garnered 200,000 views and Matt was going to respond? Well, I don't know. Was it to simply support Lex at that point? Was it to get in on the dog pile that all your friends are getting involved in? It's kind of like an exciting thing. Was it to potentially paint the landscape as extremely hypercritical towards Super Mega before they responded? to try and maybe rally support for Lex? Maybe. I think, if I had to guess, it was because he thought this would be an easy layup. He believed his friends completely, and he didn't know enough about the situation to really confirm anything, but he just had faith, and it turns out the faith was bad. Which brings us to this video sponsor. Bad faith? Sounds kind of cool, to be honest. I think I'm going to make that my first merch line. It's been such a long time coming. Bad Faith merch line. I'm sorry, every time that Bad Faith is mentioned, I'm supposed to do a merch plug. This is like in my contract because our merch line is literally called Bad Faith. It's the coolest merch around cop some and i'll love you forever and if clothes aren't your thing subscribe to me on patreon i have five main channel videos this is a clips channel video main channel gokunaro videos are dope and there are five available on my patreon right now as well as all my stream vods bunch of good stuff watch my main channel join my discord and be ready because i'm about to drop the commentary video of the year in my opinion it's gonna be serious so be excited back to nick and i should not have agreed to cover it when ethan and lex approached me with the idea so this is 
a changeup that has occurred in Nick's response video, the first response video. He clarifies that Ethan and Lex came to him and he decided to make it a main channel video. And when Lex was preparing her story, I was given permission by her to cover it. It was never something that I suggested to Lex, but when she mentioned it, I decided to share her story because she's a friend of mine. Now he is making it clear they asked him to make this video. And I do believe he's being honest in this video and probably, probably only this one. Yeah, not fully honest, but as honest as we've come to seeing him in my opinion on this situation at least and now i do still want to say that even with them asking me i don't think they had intentions to lie or to put my career in a bad spot yeah of course this is a, a definite situation where like the intentions were probably fine or whatever they probably maybe did think like super mega deserved this and all this you know yeah just a messy situation bro a messy situation usually requires a solid amount of nuance and that is something this little fellow has not at all provided up until maybe right now of course he won't be redacting his claims that matt and ryan covered up an essay but whatever i was still irresponsible by accepting it Facts. lex's video is already big enough on its own when i started to make mine it had already caught the attention of the people who it needed to catch the attention of there was no reason for me to be a part of this at all this guy watched our vid fucking videos dude this was an opinion i put in every fucking video because i wanted nick to like understand literally i was like maybe this motherfucker will watch this shit because i literally when i see shit like this i actually do want like the commentator or whatever to face the fucking mirror his stated intention he failed at and so that leads me to look at some intentions that might have been subconscious he wanted to squeeze out a video adding to the cancellation before matt could upload his response potentially to make himself look like a hero potentially to rally support for his friend lex i think at the very least, it was not just to support Lex. There were egoic motivators at play that, again, we can't prove, but through actions seem fairly obvious. There are ways to support a victim story as a friend, and this was just not the right way to do it. Probably. I looked at the situation, and I wanted to be as honest as I could be about it. If I didn't feel sorry, I did not want to express any statements that I didn't really feel were true. Like, he, like I don't understand what he's trying to say. He basically is saying, like, I went with my fifis instead of the facts, which is what he literally states at the end of his first response video, so fair enough. I know many people who watch me watch me because they know that I talk about the way I feel about things as authentically as I can. And in this case, I thought I did so, but I did it in an irresponsible way. Let's be clear, a lot of people watch you because you cover trending drama on TikTok or whatever. It's kind of like sludge, pretty mundane. And yeah, you're honest about how you feel about them, but in no way do you handle any information in those videos with any kind of delicateness. That clearly translated to the video that he made about Lex and her story. And of course, super mega. Because he is so used, again, he is so used to baby birding drama content to his audience, right? He literally takes information doesn't really digest it doesn't really process it or look at it with too wide of a lens he takes it puts it in his mouth chews it up spits it into your mouth that's effectively his job when it comes to literal allegations of severe nature a guy who does that for a living apparently just is still just gonna do pretty much the exact same thing he's not gonna treat it any differently he literally treated a serious video like that with the delicate level that he would a tiktok drama situation i want to be responsible with my platform regardless regardless of how I feel about the opposing party, and I let down my audience by doing that. I am sorry for how I handled this. I hope that you trust me to grow. I want to continue to do my job with more responsibility, with more foresight, and actually treat my platform the right way with the amount of people who watch me every day. Fair enough. That's good. Every day. I tend to get defensive when it comes to the way- You think? You fucking think. Dude, this guy's Instagram posts. You want to talk about defensive? Holy shit. The level of defensiveness that he expressed after Ryan posted his statement, basically literally just saying, yo, you guys brought up my friend who died by his own hand and whose body I fucking found. And Nick's response to that was to say and cry, literally cry as if he's the fucking victim about how people will blindly defend those who cover up a rear and to basically advocate for people to stop defending them and that spoke to a level of callousness carelessness and ego definitely ego but beyond anything 
I would say del- delusion as well. Like he's deluded himself into thinking that there's no action that could be reprehensible by him. Again, this is him now finally facing the fucking mirror. What, three months later, potentially? Holy fuck. Almost three months later. The Ryan response was about three weeks ago. It took him a while, but here we are. That victims are treated online and how they've been treated in the past. And I don't. Yeah. No, this is true. Any victim is always going to be like sub- subjugated to a fucking severe level of scrutiny. And there will always be people who just don't believe him at all, even if there's proof. Thing is, though, in my opinion, at least, you have to take it by a case by case basis. There are two sides to things. I do believe in this concept that there, you'll never have a perfect victim. There is definitely a lot of vitriol and whatever. And it's kind of up to you to determine whether it's justified, really. I think it's fair for me to. To back off of a belief I have. What's the belief exactly, though? That Super Mega covered up the uh, essay? When I know that a victim is not able to do that, that they are inherently attached to what has happened to them. Oh, I understand. So, sorry. He's saying basically, like, he is not going to back off of the belief that Lex was essayed because Lex can't back off from that claim because she clearly believes that she was essayed. I get what he's saying. I don't know why he's saying it. He kind of gives this weird implication that he only is saying he believes Lex because Lex said, sh- you know what I mean? It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird, but okay, fair enough. Yes, okay. You want to still back up your friend. We get that. Maybe he is talking about the fact that Man Ryan covered an essay. Like, sorry, the fact that he's claiming that. This guy speaks in a very vague way, which he's doing less of that right now. In the last response he did, holy fuck, he was speaking in tongues a little bit. Regardless of that, I let that get in the way and whatever happens with this situation moving forward, I am not a part of it. I do not associate myself with anyone involved. And by no- What? What the fuck does that mean? Are you fucking friends with Lex, dude? Is this guy even fucking friends with like Ethan, Lex? Not Layton, right? He wasn't- Okay, he had hung out with Layton before, but he wasn't friends with him. Ethan and Lex, are they not your actual fucking friends? There's like pictures of these people together at Dude Perfect, I remember. And he's in a fucking band with you, right? This is sus. I don't know why he said that. I'm so confused, bro. If you're actually just like not friends with them after this, or I don't get the full implication exactly. Maybe he didn't mean Ethan and Lex, I'm not sure. No means does that mean that I'm fully discrediting Lex's story by no means. No, he does mean Lex. He basically saying I'm just not gonna fuck with them anymore, I guess but he's not discrediting her story. Fair enough. Fair fucking enough. Does that mean I'm fully siding with Super Mega? I'm truly trying to do what is right for my platform. I don't want my career to be defined by situations like this. And this is not at all the kind of content I want to create. This is not the kind of situation that I ever want to even be a part of in the future. I really do think that this was like a good way for me to learn how to address these problems and how to battle with the things that I believe against people who are claiming things about me when I believe that those things might have been claimed in bad faith. Uh, just so we're clear, yeah, Nick's 24 years old. He has had time to learn these lessons. He has had past controversies that he's gotten a lot of shit for, where he has unlisted a video before in the Gus Johnson situation. He unlisted that video. It's good that he's learning now. Should have learned it earlier, but fuck it, you know? We embrace, you know, learning a lesson or whatever the fuck obviously his actions will speak i guess louder than his words but eh, whatever you know i'm not who the fuck am i i'm not the fucking principal i'm just here giving my goddamn opinion so nick if you're watching all the best regardless i need to look at these criticisms as objectively as i can listen i have no gauge of how you feel about me i know the comments aren't a very realistic depiction of my actual audience in the way that the- yes yeah, so the vast majority of your actual audience are not even here for you Probably, bro. I mean, they're here for your TikTok drama, right? There's a decent amount of your audience that actually cares about you. And to be honest, those would probably be the types of people who actually want you to face this criticism for your own literal growth. I know my merch line is literally called fucking Bad Faith and you should buy it right now because it's sick shit. I'm not out here actually trying to be a bad faith actor, so God bless. The greater viewer base on YouTube feels about me. But I'm personally very, very inspired and excited to get back to making content that I love. All right, God bless, Nick. Good for you, my friend. Yeah, on the note that I was, I guess, just speaking about, just to be clear, I think that the vast majority of Nick's viewers watch him very passively, very casually. They are not thinking very critically. They literally just want to watch somebody, as I've described it, throw red paint on another person and be like, that person's fucked up or weird or problematic or bad. There is a large market, a large demographic of people who kind of enjoy just watching people get shit on. Shocking! Ha!
<laughs> You're probably part of that demographic. I am I, to an extent, you know, it's important to acknowledge though that that's what it is. That's kind of my philosophy. You don't want to delude yourself. You don't want to lie to yourself. There is a level that it can get to where uh, when you're watching someone kind of spoon feed you opinions, right? About like how someone's a bad person, whatever, where it's just kind of, you're doing it more to make you feel superior, right? Like, oh, I would never do what that fucking cringe loser idiot is doing. And so that's why I view Nick's content as not super substantive. Again, there's absolutely videos of mine. You could say the same, that difference I would like to think is just you got to try and be aware so I do try I think to approach situations more nuanced you know what I mean you guys can let me know if that's coming off it sounds like Nick's gonna be okay everyone it's crazy wow it's almost like he understands how YouTube fucking works whatever the fuck the situation is especially if your content doesn't rely on you having like this amazing personality or whatever as long as you just focus on fucking shitting out those videos you'll be fine once again nick's audience vast majority of them don't really care or even really know nick of course he has his fans but those would be the ones wanting him to grow but I'm personally very, very inspired and excited to get back to making content that I love for the people who enjoy watching that content. Regardless of how much I loved tour, I thought it was so awesome. I can't wait to get back out there. It was still a pretty tough road bump that made it hard for me to put time and care into the videos I was making. And since coming back, I'm like super excited to give you the funny and unserious videos about the drama that we love so much on the internet. I will continue to do what I think is best for my channel and i'm so excited for you guys to see what's coming and gang i'm actually uh, semi surprised he didn't use this as like an excuse or whatever but nick i believe did start his tour because he's you know got his band queef jerky who ethan lex's boyfriend is a member of that band or at least i thought he was maybe he's not anymore because nick's saying he's dissociating i don't fucking know i don't care really i believe it was the first night of this tour for queef jerky after that first night was when nick recorded his video about lex's story so there definitely were aggravating factors as to why he was so fucking careless he was busy or whatever, you know? That doesn't change the fact that, dude, if I was that busy and I need to fucking cover my friend's story like that, holy fucking shit. Yeah, it would either be that I would literally report on it in a very objective way because I don't have fucking time, or I would just not do it and I would take my time and learn about the situation as I can and then I would make a fucking video about it. Seems pretty obvious, right? Should have seemed obvious to you, Nick. Instead of either of those options I described, Nick decided to literally shit out a video that was very aggressive, very careless. It was reactionary. Uh, I know there's a lot of reactionary response to it, but again, that is largely because of you. Turkey Tom told me in a call that we're going to upload that he would not have even made his fucking video if you weren't involved. You blew this shit up to an unnecessary degree. I understand now he's claiming that Lex and Ethan asked him to do this, but since he kind of initially, I believe, implied or sedated that they didn't before. And when Lex was preparing her story, I was given permission by her to cover it. It was never something that I suggested to Lex, but when she mentioned it, I decided to share her story because she's a friend of mine. I don't really know if I can even believe you. Dev and I are actually bringing back You Cringe, You Smoke as a new- Okay, actually, I forgot. I don't care. So a few days after I recorded this, it seems like Nick has actually privated his videos not just on super mega but also his video addressing the allegations that was dedicated to uh, just him on his channel that came in the wake of him posting a few things to his instagram he says here's a clip of me talking about friday but the full part is in the video it's like super long and boring despite the bigoted freaks that will continue to lead the hate campaign against what i do i still feel the need to speak to those who are actually fans of what i do because they do not deserve the mess i've gotten myself in anyways this is the last i will talk about it back to normal videos now it's a bit weird obviously because as a shh, 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 my boy as a uh, a preface to his video where he addresses this situation you know dedicated to that he said i'm not trying to hide anything you can find you know links in the description of this video to the original videos etc now it's seeming like he 180'd on that completely, and he's just like, Yeah, no, fuck it, I am wiping this from the slate. I'm gonna pretend that shit didn't happen and move on. That's what he's saying. Clock goes back, November 7th. I hope mine goes back to when people had morals, values, loyalty, appreciation, and respect. I don't know what the hell this shit means. I don't care if people subtweeting each other, I don't, I don't know, but... Yeah, this guy is inconsistent, I guess. That's all I really know. So, take that for what you will. So, just to be clear. 
outlined to me basically the fact that Lex has admitted in Discord messages uh, that she encouraged Layton to, you know, come forward back in April, right? In Nick's second response video, Nick literally says that Lex and Ethan asked him to make the video he made. You can choose to believe that or not, whether you fucking trust Nick. And then Morgan, Morgpie, whatever you want to say, the woman who basically her contribution was dog shit. Lex had just made her video. I had only hung out with Lex like twice maybe before this thing happened. I met her May 25th and like I can prove that. Like, wait, was it May 25th or was that Leighton? Shit. I met them all in like May and the stuff happened in July of 2023, of 2023, all this month. When Lex came out with her video, I was on basically the same page uh, as everybody else. But the situation uh, and the reason I haven't said anything thus far is because there were people that were brought into this situation unbeknownst to me by Lex first in her video, um, who I thought knew what was going to happen. I was very new to the group of friends, the Lex and their crew and Super Mega and their crew. She basically just, you know, claimed Matt was a cheater in a much worse fashion than he actually was because, you know, he kissed a girl while he was dating another girl. She claimed they just fucked and she was just a bitter scorn lover. Total fucking absolutely flagrant inclusion. That girl, she's been playing it up as though she's a, big, a victim a little bit. Whatever. She knows, I think, that like her involvement was very dumb. Anyway, she has stated in her second stream addressing this shit that Lex and Layton came to her. Okay, and told her about the video that was being formed and planned or whatever. And so that collectively, I don't know, like, again, we're talking about conspiracy, all this stuff. It really doesn't matter to me, but Nick has made it very um, explicit that there's no grand conspiracy. And maybe because he wasn't a part of the grand conspiracy, but it does seem like, you know, Lex and Ethan, I guess, were kind of, Lex, Ethan, and Layton were kind of forming a bit of a, you know, conspiracy. Again, they all probably thought they were legitimate victims. Lex and Ethan would have had Layton, like, just telling them fucking lies about Matt and Ryan, like, hyping them up. You know what I mean? That's important. So that would certainly influence, like, their thinking, I guess. The big person I'm actually looking at with a lot of question marks is yeah, Ethan. I've kind of ignored Ethan a lot because, I mean, he hasn't made a video about this stuff. He just had the one stream where he's kind of celebrating Super Mega's downfall in like the weirdest fashion fucking ever. Very weird, by the way. Your girlfriend comes out about a story of her being absolutely violated, like, like awful, awful fucking claim and a fucking live stream celebrating Super Mega's downfall or whatever. I get why you would be bitter and not like Super Mega, but holy fuck. Weird way to handle that, but whatever. Yeah, so Ethan's involvement actually raises question marks for me. It's like, did Lex edit her own video, right? Because you have to keep in mind, Ethan is a fucking YouTuber. What are the implications of that? Ethan would have understood the reach this video would have. Apparently, you know, Lex and Ethan went to Ethan's friend and collaborator, Nick is not green, asking him to make a video about it. I feel like L Ethan might actually be like a big fucking, you know, contributor to the fucking conspiracy. Yeah, I think that Ethan might be more involved than I've kind of implied. Here is a timeline of events from most of this is corroborated. We go March of 2022, Lex meets Ethan and Nick in person. In April of 2022, Lex plans for an Airbnb with Ethan and Don in May. So this is a component I didn't really understand or really fully un you know, know. Basically, Lex was in an open relationship to like an extent or whatever with Don. It wasn't like a closed relationship with Dawn, which was a detail I just didn't really know. It's possible that Lex was basically kind of dating or getting very close with Ethan before she broke it off with Dawn. May 16th of 2022, Lex tells Ethan about the essay, marking the first time she ever tells anyone about the assault. May 18th, 
2022, Lex breaks up with Dawn. May 25th of 2022, Lex goes back to Modesto and spends the next 19 days with Ethan. Lex and Ethan presumably begin dating at this point. I feel like probably is a fair assumption, whatever. You know, at this point, obviously they're very, at least very, very close friends. June 14th of 2022, Lex and Rav move into the Plex. Then August of 2022, Lex and Rav move out of the Plex. October of 2022, Lex leaves LA. December 2022, Lex moves back to LA, five minutes away from Matt's house, presumably with Ethan. April 2023, Lex encourages Layton to speak out publicly on the way home from Crater Clash 2. So that's a, the biggest jump or whatever you want to say. Just to clarify, the comment where it says Lex moves back to LA five minutes away from Matt's house, that is in reference to messages that Matt has exposed himself, that Lex texted him in December stating, I live five minutes away from you now, hooray. And so, you know, kind of implying or assuming that that's because she moved in with Ethan. They live together now, obviously, right? As you can tell by the live stream. In April of 2023, Ethan and Nick start teasing Super Mega's cancellation. That's actually a really good point. Man, so Lex made this claim, right? Lex encourages Layton to speak out. She claimed that she did this in Super Mega's Discord after, I believe, Matt released his response. This is like verifiable. Ethan and Nick start teasing Super Mega's cancellation. This is a reference to Ethan was like vague posting on Twitter, talking about Chuck E. Cheese's middle name. Layton was kind of, you know, playing with that. It's important to note that Layton actually did very overtly claim that Super Mega were homophobic to him, which he got backlash for because he was very vague about it he worded it in a very weird way may of 2023 lex and layton approach morgan from morgan's second stream that is exactly what morg pie states in her newest stream basically that in may she was approached by lex and layton that was the first time they met her morg pie was basically just saying like i actually wasn't really good friends with them it does seem like there's potential that this situation actually was very largely like Morg Pie seems like an opportunist potentially where it's just like she just thought they got got and she just wanted to get in on the juice and I do to an extent believe that was Nick's mindset as well they thought like Super Mega's fucked they're done I'm about to be the hero and I'm about to bring upon their downfall it was more nuanced than I think he thought it would be he obviously did not react well to that so Ethan edited Lex's video how else would Lex, a non-YouTuber, edit five hours of footage down to the point where there are jump cuts every few seconds? Obviously, as is clear, that's an assumption. I agree with the assumption. I think it is most likely that Ethan edited it down, but who knows? If I was in a relationship with someone who was coming out about this shit, which would I would be I'd be so fucking mad. I would be very serious about it. Not I would not be uh, doing a live stream about it or whatever the fuck. Like like fucking being an idiot and smoking weed and whatever i would edit whatever fucking video for them yeah take that for what you will i guess june 27th of 2023 lex releases my experience with don drr and super mega june 27th ethan and nick perform at queef jerky's first public performance holy fuck i didn't even think about this sorry not dumb that's an interesting thing to take note of and then june 29th nick releases super mega is full of horrible people the night before the nights of whatever um was recording his video about super mega horrible people it is a bit weird that it gets released literally the same day that they start their tour and they release an album it is so weird it is possible it's not related it's also very possible it's not not related if you get my meaning like, maybe it wasn't an overt plan of, like, advertising the fucking album, but it's possible, you know, it was just, it was a kind of convenient timing thing. Anyway, aftermath, Morgan says Lex messaged her on October 24th for permission to use some screenshots in a response. Lex will be making, apparently, a response, I believe, video addressing all this stuff, which sucks for her, but, you know, I, it, obviously she has, to an extent, created this situation, but Nick has amplified it to a fucking aggressive degree, bro. Nick unlists both of his videos and says Lex is working on a response. Keep in mind that Nick unlisted his videos on Super Mega two months after Lex unlisted her video and stated that she doesn't want any more eyes looking at the situation. And so that kind of speaks to, like, you know, was Nick's real intention just to support Lex if... He took two fucking months to unlist his fucking video or whatever. Hey, maybe he just, you know, whatever. He wanted to support with fucking stand by the claims. I don't fucking know. What is happening now? In post 
like this whole situation kind of people are i guess responding about it and stuff lex has um re like listed her video it's it's public again you can see it and the description has been changed um the last year and a half has been the worst times of my life this was the original description i was assaulted and the people who i thought were my friends used their involvement to keep me quiet about it because it benefited their youtube channel my silence has been taken advantage to my own detriment leaving me suicidal and traumatized, while also not being able to tell the people closest to me what happened out of fear of not telling my friends. I can't do it anymore. So this is what was added. Okay, this is the, I guess you could say the new inclusion. So the video re-uploaded or re-listed and basically her expressing a sentiment of suicidality. Which is fucked. Throughout the situation, I think, I, like I've kind of been, people have given me shit for going soft on Lex or whatever. The thing is that I like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't want to be a fucking like too heavy on this counter reaction where it's like, she's a fucking liar, dude. It's like, we don't actually know that. You know what I mean? There are certain things that we know, sure, that there are, are absolutely like, you know, either lies or total just misinformation, maybe too much fucking weed, whatever. But like when it comes to the core accusation the thing that would cause trauma or whatever we don't really know that's all i can really say um but yes as far as like the you know conspiracy to cancel super mega to me it's like yeah okay i don't even know why it's a meme that it's like was there a conspiracy it's like okay yeah there was they just they thought it was legitimate it wasn't like a we're just gonna falsely cancel them no they, they believe themselves Ethan has the least amount of public statements on the matter. Right. And like post um, Lex's video being uploaded, Ethan has not gone on Twitter. He did actually. I remember he was on Twitter, you know, talking about how Matt liked a Sopranos tr tweet about killing a rat. And he was like, he's trying to say he's going to fucking kill Lex or whatever. You know what I mean? He's like claiming that it's a lie or whatever. Very basically like sensitive about it, which I can understand. There's also things I can't understand. After, sorry, Matt Ryan's response, Ethan's, I think, just been pretty fucking nebulous on this. Ethan was also the biggest fan of Super Mega between Nick and himself. It seems pretty damn obvious by the fact that the vast majority of screenshots that we have show Ethan trying to talk to Matt, trying to interact with Matt, whatever. He has pictures where he's wearing this shirt. It seems like Ethan was a bigger fan than Nick, although Nick clearly was a fan as well, you know, wanted to work with them, all this shit. And so big concern and the thing that he's wants answers about is like what is ethan's involvement is lex okay and did she like sneak on her phone and write that message he says where is ethan in all of this i thought they lived together is she okay did she sneak onto her phone and write that message what's going on to me it increasingly feels like ethan had a bigger hand in all this if he was the editor, he single-handedly had the most control over the narrative. He should be held responsible as a publisher, as that means he meticulously picked and chose what claims to make public. This is a great question. If Ethan, you know, basically told Lex, like, just vent about the situation in front of a camera for five hours, and then I'll cut it down, that explains so fucking much, bro. That explains why. It was, like, very scattered. It goes on a long, long tangents, all this shit. She would have kind of just been primed to be like, fuck it, I'll just say everything thing and fucking ethan you can you know figure it out or whatever i don't know anything about what actually happened it, this is just an interesting inquiry that hopefully will be you know explained in lex's video like especially again since lex isn't uh, a youtuber she really isn't ethan is literally a commentary youtuber his opinions are held to some kind of high regard to a, a decent amount of people. That's absolutely gonna serve you a lot better than Lex, who that's not at all her domain. Ethan would be way better primed to understand what is responsible and what's irresponsible to, to include in an allegations video. I would just say, assuming he cared enough about his partner to oversee and to aid in this video coming out, he has potentially done the worst job of anybody involved because with nick it's like he absolutely fucked up and he uh made the situation worse for his friend by blowing it up but if ethan's the one like getting the nick connection and like going to nick and being like bro can you upload a video about this and he's the one choosing what stays in lex video lex's video these are questions that should be answered shout out to for um caring enough to um kind of connect some dots there's um a real lack of care there is a lack of care
and a lot of people involved in this situation. And so it's kind of good to see commentary videos that it seems like people actually do care about it, um, the information being presented. With that being said, I'm going to plug my fucking merch. You can support me by going to gokamerch.com, by the Bad Faith line of merch. It looks sick. And thank you again for all your support. You can go on my Patreon. Five main channel videos are available right now on my Patreon. And we're about to have some heat on the main channel. It's probably already out. But if it's not, join the Discord and you'll be the first to see it. I fucking forgot about fucking Layton's response, bro. Jesus Christ. Layton has gotten, up till now, Layton has gotten the most heat for this situation. Okay, the most real heat because every single person it seems like has thrown him under the bus completely. Lex sent him to the shadow realm and even Nick sent that motherfucker to the absolute like the ether. That motherfucker's incinerated. He don't even exist no more. Man's dead. Hopefully not that. Here's Layton's full statement just because at this point I've kind of made myself the fucking official reporter of this entire situation and so i just i guess i don't want you to have any blind spots in case i started writing this last night and planned on posting it this afternoon i had no idea nick was going to upload today he does not like me and we are not friends yeah that was very obvious from nick's video he was like motherfucker send that motherfucker to the shadow realm he literally said i don't like that fucking guy which adds further fucking fuel where it's like nick why did you why did you take his statements as fact, you fucking bastard? Again, Nick claims it's because he worked for Super Mega. Horrendous, like, reason. Well, I mean, it's like a reason. It's just mm, sus. I started writing this last night and planned on posting this afternoon. I had no idea Nick was going to be uploading today. He does not like me and we are not friends. I was already planning on tweeting out this update, so it's just a coincidence. I should have waited to talk until I was stable and medicated. Yeah, that's facts. This is one of the first things I pointed out about Layton, like his response specifically. I was like, this guy's like so clearly like in the middle of a manic episode. Like, It's not an excuse. It's literally just, I was like, this is so clear. I'm still currently on medicated and working on getting insurance since my medication costs a couple hundred dollars a month. All right, fair enough. That fucking, that's tough. Like not being able to afford uh, your bipolar medication, I'm assuming is what he means. Might not be what he's talking about, but yeah. I should not have involved other people in the situation, but at the time I felt it was necessary to show a pattern of their behavior. I could see how someone would think that. The thing is, is that this guy was such a bad faith actor in this. Yeah, you just wanted the juice, bro. Let's just, you know, a large part of this of his motivation was the, wanting the juice. They did make suicide jokes about people and specific people they loved. Saying the person's name was wrong, I am sorry because I now see that, that some jokes may have been their way to cope with what happened, but a lot of the jokes were still at others, or sometimes my expense. For example, they joked a lot that I'd shoot up the office one day, that really hurt me every time because I already told them that I struggled with wanting to kill myself daily. But, again, my own experience with suicide didn't give me the right to say their friend's name. This might be controversial, but I think this is fair. Again, I don't know, and this guy's not a reliable narrator, let's just be clear. Like, <laughs> everything he says needs to be looked at a little bit skeptically. But he's claiming they were making suicide jokes or whatever. And the school shooting thing. Thing is, obviously, it was clear, like, in Matt's messages that it did seem like Layton... Uh, maybe he wasn't okay with them at the time, but, like, he was expressing he was okay with them at the time. You know what I mean? That was specifically with the gay jokes he was okay with. The suicide jokes, I don't know. The idea that I drink frequently and do illegal drugs is false. I smoke weed medically for my PTSD and OCD, as well as for recreational use. <laughs> That's a common fucking theme throughout this. Everybody involved, every single person, every one of them, just smokes a fuck ton of weed. Literally all of them. And honestly, to me, that explains a lot of this. Not because if you smoke weed, whatever, you know what I mean? But it's like... There are definitely potheads that it's like almost a type, you know what I mean? Where it's like, their critical thinking's fucking totally fried. At least when they're high. Which, again, if you're a total pothead, you'll be high pretty much 24-7. I hate the taste of alcohol. I've never drank alone and I never keep alcohol at home. The only time I drink is if I'm with people that are drinking. I don't really care, Layton. Why are you saying this? Anyway, in the two plus years I was at that job, I drank the most I had ever had. I can honestly say maybe I got drunk with them between 15 and 20 times in two and a half years. Most of the time we drank was after filming or during. I'm pretty sure I haven't even been drunk since I worked there. The last time I had more than one drink, okay, who cares, bro? Shit, I no longer socialize with friends. Yo, Layden, I don't know if you're watching this, you motherfucker. Uh, you need 
to socialize with friends. You definitely need to socialize with friends. I don't know what the fuck's going on with your medication. Fix that. Fucking fix that. Socialize with your friends. You need friends. Up till now, you might not have been a good friend, but you need friends. Everyone needs fucking friends. Try to do better. That's all you can do. I no longer socialize with friends, but when I did, I had a drink or two and then stopped. Anyone that did know me knew I'd always go be outside smoking instead. Because of my childhood and PTSD, I have a drink if others are because I cannot stand to be sober around drunk people. That sounds like cope. I'm sorry. Should try to not allow that reasoning to justify drinking. It is your decision. Let's just be clear. Okay. It sounds like you're trying to take ownership of the decision off yourself. It's your decision to drink. It's peer pressure, whatever, sure, whatever, but just own it. You need to own it. An important thing that this actually speaks about to me is the very clear fact that this actually is a logic that would legitimize why Matt and Ryan would not have invited Leighton to Ryan's birthday. This was a big narrative. Part of the narrative of Lex's original story was like, these guys are fake friends. They're fake nice. Because one night that she was at a party, at Ryan's party, they everyone at the party was like pissed off and put away their fucking drinks and the party balloons and all this shit when they found out Leighton was coming. Maybe a part of that was literally like, this guy has a problem where like, if everyone else is drinking, he feels like he needs to drink. I don't know. He said, I also, I don't do drugs. Weed is a drug. Do not cope. Weed is 100% a drug. Years ago, I attempted to try shrooms and a few other psychedelics with my ex, but I had bad experiences, so I stopped doing them. Don't know why this is even being stated. Maybe people are claiming he's like, just fucked in the head. I've never tried coke or meth or any other drug, okay? When I tried mushrooms, they brought me out of the worst. Oh, they brought out the worst of my bipolar one and made me want to hurt myself. I once microdosed and didn't feel anything with my ex-boss, but that was the last time. Okay. I've only been unmedicated since May because I lost my health insurance. I was going through withdrawals from four different... Holy fuck. Holy fuck. That explains a little bit, actually. Four different medications when I caught my boyfriend and at the time, I believe my future husband cheating on me. And that's when my worst manic episode began. And I tried to kill myself soon after. If I'm being completely honest, I lost the ability to rationalize any de decision after that happened. I self-harm for days and convince myself I'll kill myself before I turn 28. Obviously, these aren't excuses or whatever, but he's making it pretty clear that he's just absolutely obliterated mentally leading up to him making that stream, which I'm going to be honest, was very obvious. Even in my original coverage, which you can see it's public, I was like, this guy's fucking not in the right state of mind, bro. Like, he's not some genius mastermind, total, like, fucking flagrant, mentally ill I guess, expression, right? That's not me speaking down to it. It's literally me just like kind of identifying what it fucking was. I thought in that moment it was a good idea to share my personal life with the world. My relationship was everything to me. I lost my best friend. For the first time in my entire life, I was completely alone, 1,600 miles away from my family. At that point, I lost control of everything and I've consistently been manic ever since. When I went live, I was still in the middle of a manic episode with only a few hours sleep in three days. Lex made her tweet when I was hiking in Zion. I only had service in certain spots, so I tried to say as much as I could at the time. When I returned home and now to LA, I was in the mindset that I could just tell my story and be done with it, instead of taking my time to share screenshots shots, and stay on topic. Yeah, not a good idea. Like, that is that is something that sucks. Like, even if you're a real victim, you do need to put care into how you announce or reveal, you know, your accusations or whatever. You do need to put care. At the very least, you need to know what you want out of a situation, okay? You you should not be coping and thinking like you just want them to improve or whatever. If you want to fucking tear someone down, know that yourself. When I found out what happened to Lex, I should have quit my job on the spot and properly supported my friend. It was so incredibly selfish and stupid of me to think I could support my friend while also still being attached to the person that hurt them. All right, this is... I think in response to the fact that Matt Watson revealed that this fucking guy who was number one Lex supporter on the earth when it was convenient was kind of shit talking Lex in the group chats, the super mega group chats at the time. Like he was someone who was basically promoting the idea of like, get them the fuck out of the super megaplex. Why are they still living in the super megaplex? Anyway, instead I continued to work at the company I hated until I was let go 
just to get insurance. This is my biggest regret. He continued working there just to get insurance. All right, you don't need to apologize for this, bro. Anyway, since I continue to have suicidal thoughts daily and frequent manic episodes, I stopped talking to my friends, Lex and Ethan. Holy fuck, dude, this is crazy. So Nick is uh, apparently no longer fucking friends with Lex and Ethan or like not associating with them. And same with Leighton. Dude, these people, man. This is why it doesn't feel like smartly coordinated because these people are just it feels like they're just not actually friends this is not how friends operate bro this is crazy shit these people are in a whole nother world for me man and i'm so thankful for that oh my god i am so fucking happy i hope you guys have fucking friends too it's one of the most important things possible it's crazy people act as mirrors and people who actually care about you real friends they'll tell you when you're being a fucking idiot they'll make you face the mirror these people are not that. You can tell. They were hyping each other up in the behind the scenes. Clearly not questioning very much of anything from anyone. Definitely not careful. That's obvious. Fuck this whole thing. Every time, every time I look into this situation, it's just like, fuck this shit. I don't, I'm glad I'm, ah, God. Train wreck. Since I continue to have suicidal thoughts daily and frequent manic episodes, stop talking to them. At the end of July or in early August, so please don't, do not assume they're associated with me anymore. Okay, understood. I know some people believe I had something to do with their account being hacked, but I would never do that. Fair enough. I've spent the past three months isolated away from most people, and for the foreseeable future, I think that's a plan. Overall, my point is the focus should have been on what happened to Lex and her abuse. What Lex went through was terrible, and I accidentally was a part of what hurt her. She was one of the greatest friends I've ever had, and I miss her terribly. I should have shared some stories as examples, but never said their friend's name. I truly didn't consider how much that would trigger someone. Some parts of my story should have been kept private. Even though it happened, it should have remained offline. He's probably right. So yeah, that's what Layden had to say. Pretty much, again, this guy got sent to the Shadow Realm. You'll probably never see this guy again, if I had to guess, like, in a real sense. I think he's just gonna probably remain low-key. Hopefully you got something out of that. I don't know. Buy my merch. I'm going to hell. GoComerch.com. Patreon.com. Boys, let's go, Gennaro. Thank you for watching, and I pray the situation ends soon. I really do. I know I'm milking this topic in a technical sense. It's just literally like the only story where I was just like, I'm just I'm gonna try and provide updates, and there's just so many fucking updates. Can't keep up, but I'm trying. So you know, in the era of fucking keeping you informed, I swear I'll talk about other shit. Just for now. Here you go. If you're watching till now, this is what you wanted, so fuck you, okay? I love you. Have a good night. Make some friends. Don't isolate yourself. God bless.